2.4 and action. So let's look at question one now. The diagram below shows a plasma membrane. And what is molecule X? So this is this little tail thing here, as denoted by the X. And we've got a 3D representation of what is a phospholipid bilayer membrane. So if you remember before, in our 2D diagrams, we'd often have the polar heads and then the non-polar tails. coming together like this. And then after that, we'd also have a few extra things. So we might have an integral protein, which comes around like this, which is within the membrane. Then you might have a peripheral protein, which sits on top, kind of like a hat. And um, these peripheral proteins might have uh, carbohydrate tails as well and you may also have um, cholesterol in here as well. So this is our cholesterol molecule. Okay, so let's match them up here. So this tail at the top is your glycoprotein or your carbohydrate. Carbohydrate. This is your phospholipid bilayer. Phospholipid bilayer. This is your cholesterol. And finally, um, your peripheral proteins, your peripheral and integral proteins. Good. Okay, so let's have a look at this. It's most X is cholesterol. So let's just circle that for now. Peripheral protein. So the peripheral proteins are these structures here that are on the top. This could possibly be a peripheral protein. Then again, it could also be an integral protein. But we don't really know. We don't know if this protein actually runs through the plasma membrane like that. But we know that it's not a peripheral protein. A glycoprotein. So a glycoprotein is a protein and a glyco means a carbohydrate, so a carbohydrate plus the protein together. So a carbohydrate and protein together. So that's something like this. So you've got your main protein here and you've got your carbohydrate tail sticking out of the cell. Finally, um, polar amino acid, not really, it's not a polar amino acid um, because Amino acid here would be an extremely small molecule. It's a bit of a red herring again. Not that one. So the answer is A. What route is used to export proteins from the cell? So in order to answer this question, you need to draw a picture of a cell and have a general understanding of how things work from there. So you, first of all, you've got the nucleus we're going to draw here. And that's where the DNA is made. The DNA gets transcribed into RNA, and then it goes onto the, the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So these are membrane-bound organelles with little dots, which are the ribosomes. Remember the ATS ribosomes of the eukaryotes that are used to make the proteins. So then after that, they are sent off to the Golgi apparatus, which looks kind of similar. Once again, pancake-like uh, pancake -like structure. It goes here, and then finally it gets exported to the plasma membrane, where it gets ex um, secreted. So this is the, the plasma membrane. Okay, so then start off from the nucleus. There's no nucleus here, that's okay. The next thing that we go to is where the site of translation. So that's either the ribosome or the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So it's either this one or this one. So we can cross off these two already. Let's see where it goes to afterwards. So then it goes to the Golgi apparatus first, then to the plasma membrane. So therefore this answer is correct, B. Next question. What does facilitated diffusion across a cell membrane require? So, what I usually teach my students is that this is our cell, 
and this is its nucleus. And sometimes uh, molecules that are too fat to get across, uh, they require a bit of help to get across. Uh, so, say if you had like a big molecule like this molecule X, in order for it to get across, then it needs to have a helper. And this helper is, you, is called a channel protein or pore protein. So yes, it does require a pore pr pr protein. It's called facilitated diffusion because facilitate means to help. So this X molecule needs to be facilitated or helped across the cell membrane. It requires a pore protein? Yes, it does. So let's get rid of these two already. Does it require ATP? No, it doesn't because you're going from a high concentration gradient to a low concentration gradient. No energy required, no ATP required. Those are key points that you have to put into section, your paper two section B answers. So going down the concentration gradient. So is there a concentration gradient? Um, no. Um, but actually yes, so it does require a concentration gradient. So yes, so the answer is C, because you require the concentration gradient from high from high to low. And that's the only way that the molecules will go from there down to there. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out. Just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a seven in high level IB biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right hand corner. Thanks.